I'm supposed to be on this stage, but that doesn't happen too rarely for me. Let me take my shoes off. All right. Let me remind myself what I'm supposed to be doing here. All right. So, art, music, and movement. Why is that together? Many times when we hear music, we create images. Memories come to mind. And with music, you also want to play and move and everything else, as Elizabeth already stated this morning. The important part is many people look at art and immediately tell me that they can't draw a straight line. They can't draw, they can't even do a good stick figure. I mean, this is what they're looking at me and saying. And they know they're coming to me as an art therapist, so I have to wonder, why are you here? <laughs> Just like for yourself, I was putting this paper down and people says, well, don't expect me to do anything good. And I'm like, my expectations of you folks are actually nothing. What I want to introduce to you is the possibility of art being more than something finished, something beautiful, something creative, something. It is to be exciting. It is supposed to feed your mind, your imagination. And I'm purposely walking around because I said that they told me I was going to have a dead space if I talked, but it's not happening. Yay. All right. So. Go ahead and switch. All right. April 10th, 2008, we was at the Iowa State Capitol and we were there showing them our art. These folks was doing everything from carving to welding to quilting to painting to using a variety of things. Somebody even had their spoken word there which is poetry. So when we think about the art or the idea of arts, it could be anything. It could be sewing, it could be crocheting, it could be knitting. It could be anything that your mind decides it makes you feel good. And we definitely want to feel good. So with that in mind, I'm looking real quickly you folks right there at that table, could I get you to move over here where there's paper? And if you're sitting at a table that doesn't have paper, may I invite you to find one because we're going to play. Yeah, there's one over here. There's one over here. Let's just get everybody to move and be happy. And Jordan is going to walk around and make sure everybody's got paint sticks. I just want to make that happen before we, I really start talking. I'm not already talking, but you know. All right. So, expressive arts. This is the intro. You can take the card over there, John. Okay, so expressive arts. This is what I want to introduce you to you. Not art therapy, not arts, not creative arts. It's expressive arts therapy. What that means, it's a variety of things. For people with Parkinson's disease especially, we have a difficult time telling people how we feel. The doctors always come around and say things like, well, how are you doing? And you immediately clam up because what do you say? I'm feeling great. Do I tell them that I tripped and fell? Do I tell them, what do I tell them? What do you really want me to say? So when I'm working with kids, I always say, so from zero to 10, Doctors always ask you, so from zero to 10, how are you feeling? And the kids look at me like, yeah, I know. So instead, folks, think about it right now for just a moment. Think about how you're feeling. Think about your stomach. Think about your heart. Think about your breath. And I know they're going to be finished soon. Yes, because I could hear it too. All right. So again, stop and think about it. 
How are you feeling? How are you doing? What's your stomach doing? What's your heart doing? What's your breath doing? Where is your thoughts going to? So again, from not zero to 10, but instead 50 to 75. 75 could be what, good? Should we make that good or bad? Good. Pardon me? Good. good, so 75 is good. 50 is not so good. Adequate, ooh, check out the words. Okay, so again, stop and think about it. Check your stomach. Check your stomach. Check your heart. Check your breath. Check your head. Where are your thoughts going? 50 to 75. Don't say it out loud, but where are you? The value of that, folks, is not how you were yesterday and not how you're going to be tomorrow, but how are you at this particular moment? That is what expressive arts therapy is all about. It's to invite you to connect all of that together. So let's switch sides. I've got some wonderful helpers around here. You're all so cool. All right, let me get over here so I can read what I've, what I've actually had given to you. So with expressive arts, when we're looking at that, we're looking at movement, sound, storytelling, and silence. This is actually from Kathy Malciotti. She's a wonderful author. If you ever, ever want to read anything about the expressive arts, go to her first. Fabulous. All right, go ahead and change slides. Okay, so the first one, movement. Most people would not think art being movement. Dancing, yoga, bilateral movement, sensory integration, energy arts, cultural practices, labyrinth, and play. Oh, good job. Note her. She's taken a picture of it. Do that. I notice the slides aren't available, so pull out your camera take a picture. All right. Movement has to do with what we do all the time. Take it back to movement, please. Thank you. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Dancing. We're always dancing. Inside ourselves, we're always dancing, we're always moving. Yoga, even if you're slowly moving, even if you're conscientiously sliding yourself across the room. Bilateral movement. How many of you know what bilateral movement means? Bi means what? Lateral means together. So, no, this is not exercise, but get your hands in front of you and just move them however you want to do. Oh, she's slapping him with her hand. I saw that. <laughs> however you want to do. Oh, and I see people going up like this, I see people like that. See, this is bilateral movement, but it means you're using both of your hands. This is what we do when we're getting dressed, when we're taking a shower, we're putting our pants on, we're putting our shoes on, we're using bilateral movement. Is that an art? Yes. Sensory integration, what does that mean? Sensory, feeling, yes, yes, touching. So it's important that we, especially with Parkinson's disease, are constantly touching, so touch your shirt or your sweater, and then move it down to your pants. Note the difference. The fingertips of your hands need to feel that sensory. It's also the difference between hot and cold. Energy arts, we won't touch onto that one because it's a long time and then you don't want me to lecture you. All right, labyrinths, oh no, cultural practices. Churches, things that you do within things such as that. Other people have parties. Uh, certain cultures have parties for birthdays. They celebrate their ceremonies. That's all cultural. Those are things that you're so accustomed to doing, you never think about it. But it is an art. Labyrinth, walking, 
How many of you have ever walked a labyrinth? Yes. Just slowly, passively doing that. Play. All right, this is the best part. In front of you, you have these wonderful sticks. Open up the box. Go ahead. Pull out of which color what do you want. Open up the box. The thing you're going to master first is a sensory. Pull it open. You got it? <clears throat> the right side or not? Is that the right side? Oh, it's got clips. Smart. So pick one. Have some fun with that. And share. Here it goes. There it takes a... You got... Oh, you black. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, purple. Purple? All right. Go ahead and try to open it up. You just pull them apart. Hold down on the bottom part and you should open them up. All right. So you can do two things on the paper in front of you. You can write the word play or you can play. This is so much fun because of the fact it dries so quickly, you can't smear it. It won't get on your clothes. All right, remember what I said about bilateral movement? You can get two of those wonderful pencils in your hands or those sticks and do both hands. And then you can go the other way around. So play. Have some fun. Oh, some people showing off. Mm-hmm. And if you want, you can dump the whole thing on the table. I mean, don't be kind. Have some fun. Again, these are paint sticks. They're tempera. They're not harmful. Please don't put them in your mouth anyway. Okay. May I have you change that, please? Sound. Sound is an art. So, I'm not going to make you listen to my singing voice because it's not really necessary, and I didn't get paid to do that. Drumming. All right, so for just a moment, put your sticks down. Put your hands on the table. And, you know, some people think we're not supposed to, like, do something musical when you're drumming. What if you just have fun like a young kid would? Oh, you did it? Who did that first? Yes. All right, put your hands on the table, and you're just for the count of 10, if you can hear me, make as much noise as you can. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. How much fun was that? And nobody cares. They closed the door. Oh, no, they left the door open. Foolish them. But anyway, wasn't that fun? Oh, let's do it again. Ready? But to five. One, two, three, four, five. And again, that is called what? Bilateral movement, and it's drumming. Okay, playing instruments. It could be the flute. It could be anything. It could be the drums. That is sound. Humming. All right, just for a moment, let's try that. But let's not worry about a sound as well like a song, but just hum. How many people know how to hum? Hum. Oh, lovely. All right, don't try to hold your breath. You can take breaths in between. Let's try it again. Oh, somebody's showing off. You took a breath. That's okay. Chanting or a prayer. Sometimes, for especially spiritual practices, there's humming, there's a chant, there's a bell. That's all sound and that's an art. That's given to us. That's what's taught to us. Vibration. Okay, now, <laughs> if you really wanted to, you could lay your head on your table. Listen to this. You could lay your head on, well, not literally on the table, but if you were to place your head on the table and then pat, you would hear and feel the vibration of the table. Go ahead and try that.
Do you feel it? No? I think the paper's in the way. Yeah. But it's really, really cool is the fact that when you're really all blown out of shape, things are really, really struggling with you, lay your head down on the table and just tap it. The gift that you give yourself by doing that is it calms you. It's almost like your loved one when you were young and they're tapping your back. All of a sudden, your breath is there. Listening. Just like you're doing to me right now, you're giving me the gift of listening. You need to do that for yourself. How are you feeling? What are you doing? What are you thinking? Listen to that. That's the sound that you want to hear. When you're walking and you're in the walker and things are going really, really quickly and you can feel and hear your breath, what is that telling you? Slow down, stop, pause, or take a breath. I have some people who are starting to talk and they just start talking and they really don't know when to stop talking and then all of a sudden they go, <gasps> you know, so sometimes we have to listen to what we're doing and how we're doing this. Again, this is all of the art. All right, change, please. Storytelling. Enactment. That's when somebody, how many of you have a, somebody in their family or a friend that when they're telling you their story, they're like moving their hands and they're raising their, they're just laughing and they're just like doing all these wonderful things and you're not listening to the story anymore. What you're doing is watching the show. You know, that is the enactment. Just like what I'm doing here for you folks, right? Drama. Oh, yes, the drama. It's kind of like going to play, but it's also sometimes when you're in your car and you're driving, if somebody gets in the way and you get really, really dramatic about what they just did, like, oh, what are you doing? Don't, oh, you're gonna do it again. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, we all have drama in our world. And that is a storytelling because it just created something for you in your day. It's something you remembered. It shifted your thoughts. Again, that's art. Improvisation. So like if I told you to look at your friends on the table next to you or whoever, and you to make a face of happiness, Please, look at each other and do something that's happiness. <laughs> Love it, look at them, that laughter. <laughs> All right, sadness. Yeah, see, improvisation. All right, what if something's funny, but don't, don't, don't use the sound, but something funny. Isn't that fun? Yes. Creative writing. All right, back to your paper. Use three words to tell a story. Three words to tell a story. People are looking at me like, huh, what? <laughs> Faith, hope, believe. I am full. <laughs> yeah. I love Marie. Ooh, there's Marie, no. <laughs> <laughs> Go to playground. Yes. All right, lyrics. Well, your three words just became lyrics. Journaling. Journaling is important. Uh, the written word is very fascinating to me. The thing that I don't like about creative writing or journaling is the idea of punctuation. 
Why do we have to do that? Just because they taught it us doesn't mean we have to use it. So I give you permission to forget all about punctuation whenever you choose a journal. Use just words. Put three words together. Cut a picture out. Stick it on there. Say, that's enough. Sometimes when you're sad or sometimes when you're happy, just say happy. Why add anything more to that than just happy? You don't have to judge it. You don't have to measure it. You don't have to anything. Again, we're going back to the concept of art. All right. Embodied narratives. Okay, we're not even going to touch that one. Ceremonies and rituals. All right, folks. This is the time when you go to a family reunion or a high school reunion or whatever. Uncle Bill or Bob comes around, sits down and go, my God, did I ever tell you the story of? And you're going, mm-hmm. Well, let me tell you what it is. And you're going, I've heard it before. Nope, not this one. And you're going, yes, I have. Okay? Because that's what it is. It's storytelling. It's reminding us. It was a gift last night when I was asked to, to present to a group of folks about my presence here with the American Parkinson's Disease Association. And the person said, well, she's going to present. And I says, no, I'm going to tell a story. Because that's what our life is, is a story. Every day from the moment you get out of bed till you go to bed, it's a story. And you're the one that's unwrapping it on an hourly basis. Folks, you are creating art every single moment. You move every time you speak, when you stop to see someone, when you smile at someone, or you first get to meet someone for the first time. Your story changes, and that's truly, truly a gift. And change the slide. All right, silence. Who would have thought silence was an art? I mean, I, as parents, we really would like to have silence. But when we're given silence and there's kids in the house, ooh-wee. You can really very quickly go figure out what these kids are doing. But mindfulness, it's a word that is used all the time. Mindful, it means, are you aware of what you are doing? When I used to be a part of the Parkinson's Association, it was constantly asked, you know, well, how do I do this? And I said, well, what are you doing before you do it? And they go, well, I don't know. You have to be mindful of everything you do. For someone who is a scooter or a walker, you don't just get up and start moving. You gotta move that walker to you. Mindfully, you've got to set things in your mind of how things are going to happen. Caregivers, family members, when someone is looking at something, don't assume they don't know what they're doing. They're being mindful. In their mind, they're playing the stage. Okay, I need to get up, I need to turn around, I need to grab my walker, and then I'm gonna walk. The moment you say something, it cuts into that mindfulness. Before anyone does anything to get up off the table, you can say, do you need some help? They're gonna say, nope. So you just sit on the chair and let them do what they need to do. Be mindful of what other people need and what, how they're serving themselves. That's so important. But it also, folks, it also gives you the, the gift of grace. The ability to be aware of someone else and what they need to do. That is truly mind-blowing to me. Meditation. Okay, take yourself back to your paper. All right. So, for, uh, let's go for a long minute and put your marker on the paper. Listen very carefully. You may have to move around to where there's an empty spot in the paper. But for about a minute, I would like to have you place your marker on the paper and do not lift it up. That means one continuous line. And just allow it to just 
meditate around. And if you want to stand up and make that happen, feel free to do that. But again, just for one minute, allow yourself just to let it be. Don't lift up the marker. Don't worry about it. You can follow that line with your eyes if you choose to. But just allow yourself to breathe. Be very mindful of your line. And give yourself permission to even cross your lines if you need to. Is somebody showing off? They're doing bilateral. They got two hands going. And again, just continue having it happen. And stop. Now switch hands and switch colors. Find a different color and switch hands. Okay, anybody who's right-handed, left-handed, go ahead and make it happen. And as a side note, be mindful of what your shoulder is doing. All right, ready? And begin. Breathe. Don't be in a hurry. You're not going anywhere. You're the one that's in control of that line. And stop. Check in with yourself. What's your stomach doing? What's your heart doing? What's your breath doing? What's your head doing? I want somebody just can't quit. <laughs> All right. Art making. Look at what you've created on your table. I don't have to explain that one. That's art making. This is what you're doing. You're just playing. Oh, I like your words. She jumped quickly. Yay. Okay. Yoga. I'm not going to touch yoga because Elizabeth did that very well to this morning when she was up there showing you how to do the chair. So you understood what that is. Labyrinth walking. Again, note all of this is in silence. You're not talking. Your brain still has to function. But sometimes when we're mindfully trying to figure out how to make a movement, our brain hurts. So by just being silent, it allows your brain to rest. We're going to skip over the felt sense because I really want to talk about the introception. This is how you feel. What are you experiencing? When you first came into this space and sat down, hopefully some of you knew me and just knew this was going to be fun. Others of you wondered, I don't know if I really want to do this. I mean, it's art. I mean, I really suck at art. I'm, I'm really poor at art. <laughs> you know, so I mean, yeah, fine, I'll do it. Or others were going, well, I can draw. I'm quite capable of drawing. What is these play things? I mean, you know, I don't understand. Why can't we just have regular? Those are things thinking within yourself. You're building that up, sensing how you are. The, the invitation here is to move into yourself and hear yourself speak and actually have the sense to say, be quiet. We're going to go in here and have some fun. And then again, going back to the stomach, to the heart, to the breath, and to the brain, to the mind. This is what it's all about. Folks, I wish I could say I don't understand Parkinson's disease but I do. I have made thousands of friends. I have lost thousands of friends. Not because of Parkinson's disease, but with Parkinson's disease. And the one thing we always were challenged with, how do we feel 
many times we're overwhelmed with just being tired, exhausted, being brain dead. My brain is so exhausted from just trying to move from point A to point B that I don't even want to do it anymore. So we need to be mindful of that. We need to check in with ourselves and see where our breath is going. What is our stomach feeling? So that our brain can be with us. Witnessing art. Okay, so every one of you are sitting at the table with someone else. So what I would like you to do, <laughs> this is gonna be fun, not looking at what you're creating, but what somebody else is creating. So make a friend across the table or next to you, and you are going to get your marker, your pen, and you're gonna create by not looking at what you're creating, but instead looking at what somebody else is creating. Does that make sense? No. I love it, <laughs> yes. Okay, so what you're going to do, all right, as an example, let me grab one yeah. marker. I'm gonna be looking at yeah. Doug, hi Doug, and you're gonna get something, get a marker. Right. Get a marker, all right. I'm gonna look at you, uh -huh. drawing, whatever you're gonna draw, okay. and you're gonna look at what I'm drawing. So I can't see what I'm drawing, but I'm looking at yours. Okay, it makes sense? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and look at mine, and I'm looking at yours. And we are going to perhaps even make friends. But I'm looking at his and not looking at mine. Fun, thank you. Does that make sense now? Go ahead and give it a try. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be making art with someone else. You're going to witness them creating. All right, so what I mean is you're going to get a marker, look at someone, get your marker. Look at these people looking at me like I'm not doing it. Yes, you are. All right, so you're gonna look at each other, okay, yep. Look at his hand, and you're gonna create, you are gonna look at her hand and watch what she's creating. Make sense? Not at her picture. At her picture, what she creates. Go for it. Now your both hands are gonna be working at the same time. You're not looking at each other's eyes, you're gonna be looking at the art making. You're looking at their artwork while they're creating it. Yep. Look at this dialogue happening. Love it. <laughs> so sometimes we don't have to actually be knowing what we're gonna be drawing because of the fact we're interacting with other people, art making. And how much time do I have left? I don't remember. How much? Thank you. All right, go ahead and switch it. All right, thank you. Wasn't that fun? Super fun. This is just fabulous. Okay, folks, the important part is there are artists in this room that are my best friend, and Amanda created this, and the reason why I wanted to show it is because look at it. Isn't it just fabulous? And without her even knowing that I'm doing it, I'm gonna be standing right behind her so you'd know exactly who it was, but she doesn't know I'm doing this. <laughs> but look at that. That is art. Look at the details. Try to imagine, what do you think it is? Mmm, an elephant. Am I moving too much for you? <laughs> Stop and look at it. Start at one corner and just go out. And while you're doing that, be mindful of your stomach, your heart, your breath, your mind. Continue looking at that art.
calm yourself down. Oh, and there's people who are talking about it. Feel free, go ahead and take a breath, look at each other and talk about it. You know, what part of it do you think is good? I'm noticing the banjo and the guitars. Isn't that just fabulous? And Amanda didn't even know there was going to be so many people admiring it. The textures? The textures, yes. What else about it? Throw out words. Black and white cat. Pardon me? Black and white cat. Black and white cat. Oh, yes, look at that. Tell me again. Laying on a cow. Laying on a cow. Think about it. Just look at that. Isn't that fun? Now, my husband would look at that and just go, mm hmm, and just keep walking. Where I'm just like, oh, that is so cool. Mm hmm. That is wonderful. The contents of a drawer. My wife's bedside table. <laughs> His wife's bedside table. I love it. Yes. Okay, I don't remember what the last slide is, so can you make that happen? Okay, this is me. This is my artwork. I love creating masks. There's times when I really need to just want to write the words that I am experiencing. Sometimes I get so overwhelmed with everything, but I don't want to go big, so I go small. I want to be astonished. I want to rejoice. I want to treasure. I want some joy. I want to be surprised. I want to be amazed, stunned. I need to shout. Well, wait a minute, I need to breathe. I need to rest. But I'd like to scream. May I scream, please? Shout. Big, small, moan, groan. Be thoughtful, be happy, unhappy. So just take a few minutes and get your marker back out and write the words on how you feel. Don't, don't just be happy with one. Write your words. As you write one word, write another word. They don't even have to be separated. Don't worry about punctuation. Please don't do punctuation. I don't know what that would mean when you're writing a list of words, but write your words. How are you feeling? What are you experiencing? What's happening in your stomach? your heart, your breath, your brain, your mind. Write those words down. And trust me, you are creating art. All right, so again, just in case you don't know me, I'm Sam Irwin. That is my email address. My office is at 939 Office Park Road. It's suite 120. And I think I, I think I can, I think I can, I think I will announce that the Des Moines Art Center, NAPDA has decided to become friends and will be offering art at my studio address there, uh, beginning in September. So look out for that. And um, folks, 
know, when, when you get ready to leave, don't move out real quickly. Hit all the tables. It's really fun to see what you all did. Any questions? And you can ask me any question you want because I'm, I'm not bashful. No questions? Where's Office Park Road? Office Park Road is. Do you know where the Walmart is on Windsor Heights? Yeah. Okay, I'm just down the street south from that on 8th Street. And it's big white buildings up a hill. Okay? Any other question? No? Oh, look at that. You're rolling pens around. Yes. Okay, any questions, comments? Did you all have a good time? And, and even more, how can we make better noise? Put your hands on that table and do what? Beat, yes. Thank you, folks. Have a good afternoon.